Hello friends, it's Christy Marcott. Today I'll be sharing the cards I made using Queen & Company's Frankie and Friends kit. I have received so many messages and requests for me to use this kit. It was just a matter of time since I have so many things to work on right now. So let's jump right in to my first set of cards. I will be making two of every card, but I'm only going to show the process of assembling one. I decided for my first card, I'm going to make a slimline card and I'm going to create a nighttime scene since this is a Halloween kit. I have a cloud stencil from MFT and I'm using Distress Ink. This is the black soot color. I would have used Distress Oxide, but I don't actually have this color in the oxide yet, but that's okay. This still works fine. I'm using Bristol Smooth cardstock. That way I can get a nice smooth blend. And I'm just adding some color, building my way up. This isn't something I do very often, so I'm definitely not an expert. Most of the scene is actually going to be covered up. You're really only going to see the very top area, but I still wanted to make sure to get good coverage. The stitched rectangle die is by Pink and Main, since they have some nice slimline dies. So I'm going to go ahead and stamp the sentiment directly onto the card. This is Happy Fright Night. And unfortunately, I did not get a very good impression. So off screen, I just used a black pen and filled in all those letters. I'm going to attach this panel onto some black glitter cardstock. I thought this would add a really pretty night scene. And I am using a liquid adhesive to adhere that in place. And then I'll also be putting this whole panel on some solid black cardstock, just for a little extra detail. So I'll adhere that piece in place, and then I did already adhere it to my card base. So now I can start creating my scene. I used Queen & Company's Border Die. This is one of the little hillside. And this die is only like five and three quarters inches long. So I did have to run it through my die cut machine twice so I could have a full piece to go across the slimline panel. So now I'm going to start assembling all of the different monsters and critters for, I guess they're actually all monsters for this card. I have four different images. First one I'm going to do is the ghost and I'm going to make this one the shaker. I used the outline die to cut out that back piece, attached the foam. Now I'll add the white toppings that are included in the kit and then I'm also using some clear diamonds that are not included just for some extra sparkle. I remove the backing on the other side of the foam and then attach the acetate. Put liquid adhesive all around that outside edge and then adhere my die cut frame. Next, I'm going to assemble Frankenstein. And for the other three images, I won't be doing shakers. So that's a nice thing about Queen & Company's kits. You can make them as the little shaker images or you can simply use the dies and create non-shakers. So they have great detail with all of that stitching and little eyes and eyebrows. It's just a lot of fun. So I have the monster in the middle and then the mummy on the right. And just a note, that mummy is not a circle. I thought it was at first, but then when I was attaching that frame die cut to the outline die cut, I found that they weren't lining up perfectly. So just make sure you're lining them up before you adhere. I just use my scissors to trim away the extra. So I'm doing the eyeballs on this orange monster and I wanted them to be white. So I just ran that die through my machine with some white cardstock and then trimmed away just the eyeballs, glued it onto my card. And now I'll attach the black part of the eye. Not sure if you would call it the pupils if there isn't any eye color it doesn't have an iris on the eye, but we'll still call it the pupils. These are fairly small pieces, so I am using my embellishment wand to help pick those up. I just put some glue down on the white circle and then attach that small black circle in place. I'll just finish assembling the rest of the eyes while I create my little monsters. So I'm looking around, I missed one of the pupils which I do end up finding later, but I will have to go and cut another one. 
So for the mommy, I'm going to attach some of the eyebrows. I just cut these out using some black cardstock. And then I'll attach two of the eyes. I'm going to put two on the ghost first. And then on Frankenstein, I'll put the eyebrows. And there's several pieces to Frankenstein. I think it has the most pieces. You have the eyebrows, the hair, which is really fun. It has a nice stitch detail all around the edges. Hard to see on the black paper, but you'll be able to see it in the still photo. So we have the eyes, and then there are two different mouths. There's one that just has that slight smile, and then one that has the little teeth sticking out at the bottom, or little fangs. For the orange monster, I adhered the two mouthpieces together. That way you can just have the white fang showing in the white and then the rest of the mouth is in black. You probably could cut off those teeth and then assemble them, but that's a pretty tiny piece. So there I did cut some more of the circles. And now I can add the eyes to my mummy. There's so many different ways you could create your little monsters. You definitely don't have to do the standard with the pieces that are included in the kit. Now Frankenstein also has the little bolts. I'm not sure what those are that come out the side like ears. So before I attach those, I decided to run a black marker all around the outside just because I could still see some of the green paper. And I wanted to really see more of that black hair. And I'll just put a little glue on the back side and then attach those bolts. So there are my four monsters. And I am going to pop up Frankenstein using some foam dimensional tape. It'll also make sure those bolts don't come off later. Just cut my foam tape to make sure I get nice solid coverage and I can start attaching them onto my card. So I love the contrast from that dark night scene with all of the colors in the pattern paper and also that white paper. And I did use some white pearlescent or shimmer paper for the ghost and the mummy. And I will have links provided in the description box for this kit along with most of the products I use in this video, including where I buy the shimmer paper. Since I use it quite a bit, I buy it by the ream. Along with the Frankie and Friends kit, I also purchased the coordinating outline dies and the solid 6x6 matte stack. I love to have both of those when I'm working with Queen and Company's kits. I'm just finishing touches. I'm going to add a little bit of bling. I don't think it needs a lot, and I decided just to go with black bling. I use some of the solid goosebumps and also the black petite posies. And then just one final detail. I decided to add some glossy accents to all of the eyes. I think it adds a really fun finish to the card. So now their eyes have that pretty glossy look to them. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this design. And this card was so much fun to make. Now moving on to my next set of cards, I'm using a card sketch from MFT. This is number 489. I have the large polka dot paper for the background. I use some of Queen & Company's foundation dies for those skinny strips that I'll adhere on the left hand side. I think this is foundation die set number eight. So I cut both of them out in the tone on tone orange pattern paper and I'll adhere them down using some liquid adhesive. And they are a full A2 size length, but I have that background piece at five and a quarter by four inches. So I'll just flip over that panel and trim off the extra. And I'm layering all of these pieces using some black cardstock. That's one thing that's really nice about this kit is if you have black cardstock, really simple to add all of those extra layers. Next, I'm going to add some black and white twine on the left hand side of the card. 
I put a little bit of ATG on the back panel and then wrap the twine around the card twice. I'm trying to make sure I have it nice and straight. And just to make sure that twine's not gonna come off of the card, I'm gonna put some red line tape on the back side of this panel. Then I'll add some ATG. And on that very edge closest to the twine, I am gonna use some liquid adhesive just so it doesn't pull away from the card base. I find that liquid adhesive seems to hold the best for that part. Next, I'll attach this scalloped rectangle die cut. Put some liquid adhesive on the back. And both of these are from foundation die set number two. So that's where I'm gonna be putting my image. I will be adding a little bow, but for now, I'm just gonna thread that twine underneath the other two rows, and I'll leave it there until I decide where I want to put that bow. For this card, I'm assembling this adorable owl. And this owl is so fun since you could use it all year round. Now I will be making a Halloween card since I'm sticking with the sentiment stamps that are included in the kit, but you could always use it for other occasions. I'm gonna fill this owl with three different colors of the shaker toppings that are included in the kit, just trying to match the background paper. I decided not to add the black, so I'm just gonna do the teal, the yellow, and the orange. Once I sealed all of those shaker toppings in place with the acetate, glued my frame on, and I just have an acrylic block sitting on top to let that glue dry. While I wait, I'll assemble the eyes, and this is a double eye die cut. Put some glue on the back and attach it to my owl. And for the wings and the beak, I used some glitter cardstock that I just had on hand. I thought it would add a really lovely sparkle. So I'll attach the beak first and then put a little bit of glue on the top area of each of the wings. And for the feet, I cut them out using that same yellow paper. And this yellow is part of the solid matte stack that coordinates with the kit. Put some liquid adhesive on the back of the owl and attach it to my card. I've already gone ahead and stamped out the sentiment just to save on time. And I also layered it using some black cardstock. So this is Happy Owl Oween. Isn't that fun? I am gonna pop up this sentiment using some foam dimensional tape, but I wanna make sure to leave a little gap where it's gonna go over that twine. I don't wanna have that extra bump. So remove the backing. And then for placement, I'm gonna have the owl's feet sitting on top of the sentiment. So I'm trying to make sure to get that sentiment in the correct position before I push it down. And for each of those feet, since the very top part is going off of those other layers, I will add a tiny piece of foam tape. Super tiny piece just going on the top of the feet. And then I'll put a drop of liquid adhesive on that bottom portion where it's going to attach to the sentiment strip. So a little challenging since these pieces are fairly small. I am going to use my tweezers to help me hold that piece. So there is one little foot, and, and then I'll get to the other one. Isn't this owl absolutely adorable? I love the big eyes on it. So now I'll tie my bow, and I'm going to have it go right underneath the sentiment. And not a big bow, I'm just going to have a little small one sitting underneath there. Trim off the extra. I'll finish off my card using some more Queen & Company bling. For this card, I have some glitter globes, some iridescent bubbles, and also petite posies. Just to add that little extra sparkle and detail. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this sketch. And if you are interested in any of the sketches I share, I have all of that information on my coordinating blog post, and that link is provided in the description box below, or you can simply head over to christymarcott.com. So for my next card, I'm using a sketch from Mojo Monday. This is number 546. And this is a really fun sketch, and you can add many different pattern paper layers. 
and Queen & Company's paper pads are perfect for all of those layers since they have lots of tone-on-tone -tone and muted designs mixed in with those busier patterns. So for the background, I have the black paper with some small stars. I'm using this stripe paper for that wider strip on the left-hand side. And then I use some of the solid for the orange banner. And then I have the green polka dot paper with the little black dots. So before I adhere this orange banner, I did add a scrap of cardstock to the right hand side just to keep all of those pieces level. And I'll do the same thing underneath this green polka dot paper. So in the very middle, I'll add one strip of cardstock and then all the way on the left, I am gonna add two pieces. I like to hold the paper up to the card and just feel if I need to add that extra layer. So I can adhere that to the card. I'll put my card front onto a card base. And for most of the cards, I am leaving that eighth of an inch of the card base showing. I use some of the yellow from the six by six solid for this stitched circle die cut. I'm gonna put a scrap of cardstock on the right hand side just again, keeping everything nice and level. And I do end up putting another small piece of cardstock next to that white cardstock. I'll adhere that to my card. And now for this card, I'm going to be assembling the bat image and I will be making a shaker. What's really fun about the bat is when you pop out the center of this foam piece, it just makes a smaller little bat image. So you could use that for another card. You could attach paper to it, or you could put some foil or glitter on it. And you could also use that smaller insert paper die cut, which I will be doing on a later card. For shaker toppings, I'm using the black squares that are included in the kit and also some diamonds, just for a little extra contrast and sparkle. I'll put some liquid adhesive all around the outside and then attach that die cut frame. And I'm just gonna hold that frame down. Not sure why I didn't grab my acrylic block. Next, I will attach the eyes and I cut these out using the gray solids. I think it's the darker of the two grays. And you could add in a pupil with a black pen. I decided to leave it without kind of gives it a more eerie look to the bat. I've already gone ahead and stamped out the sentiment and also layered it with some black cardstock. This is flying by with a Halloween high. I cut the right side at an angle just for some extra interest. Before I adhere it to my card, I'll be adding those cardstock layers. Just trying to see where I need to add a little extra. And on the left-hand side, I do add a small foam square just on the very bottom. Again, keeping everything nice and even. So I'll put some liquid adhesive on the back of my bat and adhere it to my card. And then using foundation die set number two, I cut out three stars and I use Queen & Company's black glitter foam for these. This foam is so easy to use since it's self-adhesive. So I'll just attach the three stars. I'll add an iridescent rhinestone in the center of each of the stars. And then I'll also use some yellow jelly gems. Some of the bling I use in this video has been discontinued. I am trying to use up some of those older styles. So there are my two cards using this sketch. And then moving on to my next set of cards. Won't be using a card sketch this time. I have this fun confetti looking paper for the background and I used a stitched rectangle die to cut that out. All of the dies I use in this video are made by Queen & Company except for that first rectangle stitched slimline die. So I'm gonna adhere this panel onto some black cardstock you can see how nice the black cardstock works with this kit. 
Now with this stitched rectangle die cut, I do like to add a little bit of liquid adhesive along the outside edge just to make sure it doesn't pull up later. I've noticed sometimes with that stitch detail, it warps the paper just slightly. So using that liquid adhesive, make sure it stays in place. I use this fun zigzag border die for the top of the card and then also one of those skinny strip dies. I'm going to attach that piece on top and I do have the edges going off the paper but I'll just trim those off. I'll put my card front onto a card base and I can start working on the image and the sentiment. So for this card, I'm using the stack of pumpkins. So this is really fun. You could use it with just the pumpkins or you could add the face. Now the jack-o'-lantern face has the tiniest die cut ever, that little nose. And I decided I'm not gonna mess around trying to adhere that. The die has the eyes and face and mouth all set in the right position. So I just lined it up on each of the pumpkins, adhered that die in place using some tape, and then ran it through my die cut machine. So I did it for each of the pumpkins, and now I'm gonna do the cheat and add some black cardstock behind. That way I don't have to go and glue down all of those teeny tiny little die cuts. This saved me so much time. So now I can adhere the foam on top. I like that there's the division between each of the pumpkins. So you could add different shaker toppings in each and having that division means you don't have to fill up this shaker. I decided not to add any shaker toppings in that very top jack-o'-lantern since I didn't want to cover up the face. And even in the bottom two, I'm not putting a lot. So I'm kind of holding it upright to see where the shaker toppings will fill. I used the orange toppings that are included in the kit and also some orange diamonds. So once I remove the backing on the foam, I sealed those toppings in place with the acetate, add some liquid adhesive, and now attaching that die cut frame. And then there is the small die cut for the stem. And I just cut this out using some brown cardstock, and then I'll attach it to the very top pumpkin put some liquid adhesive on the back and attach this shaker image to my card. I'm trying to make sure it's fairly centered. So for the sentiment, this is happy trick or treat day. I used two of the gray solids for the sentiment and also that matted layer. I'll just add a small scrap of cardstock on the outer two edges and then I'll pop up this whole banner using some foam dimensional tape. And adhere that right underneath the three pumpkins. And finishing touches, I use some more foundation die sets. This is set number two and three with the stars and the circles. And for these stars, I use some black glitter cardstock that I have on hand. I'll glue them directly onto the three stitch circle die cuts and then adhere the three circles to my card. And the white circles, I use some more of that shimmer paper. Then for bling this time, I'm just using a couple different colors. I have some petite posies in the orange and also I think it's either gray or white goosebumps. They have a slight color to them. So there is my finished card and I did make two using this design. I love that soft green with the orange. Now moving on to my next set of cards and I think this is my favorite. For the background layer, I'm using some specialty cardstock by Tonic Studios. This is an iridescent card in the water sprite color and it's so pretty. Now you'll be wondering why am I covering this beautiful paper up? Well, even with just that eighth of an inch showing, it still has some lovely shine. Now I did cut out the center, so I saved that piece for another project. I have some white shimmer paper for this front panel. 
and I used a die from set number eight. It's this fun reverse scallop circle die. So it has this nice big opening and I decided I'm going to add a few monsters in that opening. So I have three little monsters and two of them I only have part of their body. Well, you're not going to see any of their legs anyway. So I even have a little extra on two of the monsters and I'll just be trimming that off. So the green monster you're going to see the most and the other two are just peeking through. So I'm trying to line them up, figuring out how I want the placement since their eyes get really close to each other. I'll put just a little bit of liquid adhesive on the back, attach the first monster, then I'll put a little more liquid adhesive on the back to secure the other two monsters. And on the yellow, I do end up needing to trim just a tiny bit more off the right hand side so you don't see it. So there is the placement for my fun little monsters. For the sentiment, I'm using I want candy. I thought this worked perfectly, so those monsters are looking for some candy. I'll attach this to the lower portion of the card. And for now, I'm going to leave that paper hanging off the end since I'm going to cut it once I attach this entire panel onto the other layers. I'm just going to put liquid adhesive all over the back. Adhere this to my other two cardstock layers. And then I can flip over this panel and trim off that extra paper. And I only needed to cut out one mouth for the monster since you don't see it on the other two. So I'll just attach that to the green monster. And since I did cut out the center of that specialty paper, I do want to add some scrap cardstock. That way it doesn't dip down. So I just put some white cardstock in there. I'll put my card front onto a card base. And for this card, I don't have any of that white card base showing. So now my little monsters need some eyes. I'm using some eyeball stickers that are from Queen & Company. I think these are currently out of stock, but I still had some extras and these work perfectly. Now they are stickers, so they do have adhesive on the back, but just to make sure they're going to stay in place, I did also add some liquid adhesive. Then also gonna put a couple banners in the upper left-hand corner, just using some of the solids. The dies are from set number seven, I believe. They're designed to go with a sentiment banner, but you can use them on their own. For bling, I'm using the Candy Swirl Epoxy Dots. I have two yellow that I'll just put next to the sentiment, and then just two black petite posies on those banners. So there is my finished card. It's definitely my favorite from this whole set. But do let me know which card is your favorite. Moving on to the next card, I'm using another card sketch. This is MFT number 353. And I won't be following this sketch very closely. I have the spider web paper for the background, and then I attached a white circle die cut to the right hand side. I have it hanging off the paper slightly, and I just trimmed off the extra. I used one of Queen & Company's border dies for this fun zigzag pattern, and I just attached it to the bottom of the card. Then I realized I didn't get it all the way to the right hand side. So I just took a black pen and colored on that pattern paper so that you couldn't tell. Now for the top of the card, I'm going to add two different stitch banners. And I also cut out one of the skinny strips using some black cardstock. And you're not going to see most of it, so I did cut it in half. I'm holding up the yellow banner so I can get placement on that black strip nice and straight. And then I'll just trim off the extra. And I can use some liquid adhesive and I can attach the yellow banner. And I do have both of these banners just a little bit longer, so I will be trimming off the ends. I have the yellow one, and then I can attach the sentiment, and this is have a monstrously fun Halloween. Queen & Company's kits always have the best sentiments. 
I would purchase the kits just for those sentiment stamps. So I trimmed off the extra on both of those banners. I'll put this panel on some black cardstock. And I can put my card front onto a card base, leaving that eighth of an inch of the white card base showing. This spiderweb paper is probably the busiest paper in the whole pack. Since you've already seen me assemble several other shakers in this video, I have the rest of them already put together. So I'm using the Frankenstein, and for the shaker toppings, I use the teal and white toppings that are included in the kit and also added in some clear diamonds. I'm just gonna use some bling. I have the green glitter globes, some of the goosebumps in that gray color, and also some black petite posies. So there is my finished card, and I did make two using this sketch. So moving on to the next set of cards. Again, not using a card sketch. I'll be creating another nighttime scene. I have two of the skinny strips, one with the black and white diagonal paper, and then I just did a thin strip with some black cardstock. For the very back layer of this card, I have some black glossy specialty paper, and this is by Tonic Studios. I did cut out the center of that specialty paper so I could use it on a future project. So I'm gonna add some scrap cardstock just to fill in that cutout. I'll put this onto a card base and I won't be having any of the white border showing this time since it is a nighttime scene. I'll attach this diagonal strip to the bottom of the card. And I have the black paper with the stars for the sky and then just some solid black cardstock for the hill. Now I'm going to be doing some heat embossing with the sentiment since I want it in white. I'm going to treat this area first with some anti-static powder. I have Bursa Mark ink. And I'm using my Mini Misty so I could stamp it several times to get a nice solid impression. I'm using some Wow White Embossing Powder. And even though I did use some of the anti-static powder, I still ended up getting some stray white embossing pieces but I think it really adds to the look of the card. So I'll go ahead and get this heat set. You can see how much contrast that white embossing powder has with the black cardstock. Now for the images, I'm gonna add the little ghost shaker, and then I'm using the inside black cardstock from the bat. But first I'm gonna add a moon, so I have some yellow cardstock, and I just use a stitched circle die cut for the moon. I'm gonna pop up the bat using some foam tape. And the bat will be flying in front of the moon so you'll be able to see it on the card. I'm trying to wipe away some of that extra anti-static powder. And for bling, I'm using a yellow glitter globe up by the moon. And then I also have some yellow iridescent bubbles and some silver petite posies. Now for the second card, I made a non-shaker since I've already used up all of the foam pieces for the ghost. Sometimes the non-shaker images are my favorite. It's nice to have variety. Now on to my final set of cards. For the background panel, I have some of the solids in this charcoal color and I used a stitched die. This is made by Little Inker Designs, but they are no longer open. I love this die since it adds really nice detail without any extra dimension. I layered that on some white shimmer paper and then again on this black mirror specialty paper. I did cut out that center again, so I had to put some scrap cardstock in place. Put my card front onto a card base. Then I use this fun die that's part of set number six, I believe. This is perfect for adding an image or a sentiment of that green polka dot paper, but I am gonna cover up the circle. So on a previous card with the three monsters, I had that reverse scallop piece. It's fun because it cuts out the center and you can use that on another card. For the image, I decided to create a mummy, but I used a green paper instead of white. 
I think it turned out really cute in the green. And I filled the mummy with three different shaker toppings, all from the kit. So I have the teal, the black, and the white. I also used googly eyes for a fun look. With the sentiment, I stamped out Seasons Creepings. I used two different gray solids. Just layered those two pieces of gray for a little extra interest. And then using those same two gray colors, I'm gonna add the two banners in the upper left-hand corner. Then for bling, I have some metallic bubbles. It was a thank you gift that came with a previous Queen & Company order. So they don't have these any longer, but this green matches really nicely with the pattern paper. And then I also use some more of the black petite posies. So there are my finished cards. And for the second mummy card that I made, I did use some white pops since I ran out of the white toppings that are included in the kit. Now here's just a quick recap of the 16 cards I made using Queen & Company's Frankie and & Friends kit. This is such a fun kit, and I love that their Halloween themes are on the cutesy side and not the scary side. If you are interested in the kit or any of the items I use, I will have links provided in the description box below. I always enjoy using Queen & Company products. If you've never made a shaker card before, I highly recommend their shaker kits. So simple and easy to use since the foam and acetate is pre-cut. I do suggest picking up the outline dies. It does make it easier for assembling the shakers. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.